In this short video, I will explain six different types of graphs and when to use them. I will cover scatter plots, line graphs, bar graphs, pie charts, histograms, and box and whisker plots. If you're looking for a short video on how to make a graph, please click the link below. Scatter plots, line graphs, and bar graphs can all be used to illustrate relationships between two variables. This is a scatter plot. Scatter plots can be used to identify relationships between two quantitative variables. Quantitative variables are numeric and represent a measurable quantity. For example, population, height, or weight. On this scatter plot, we are showing the relationship between height and age in children. We expect a positive correlation as children tend to grow taller as they get older. A positive correlation can be seen in this graph. As one variable increases, so does the other. When plotting your graph, the dependent or experimental variable goes on the y or vertical axis. The independent variable goes along the x or horizontal axis. In this example, we are measuring height, the dependent variable, as it changes with age, the independent variable. This is an example of a negative correlation, as temperature decreases with higher wind speed. Sometimes there can be no correlation between variables, for example, birth month and height. Line graphs can also be used to show the relationship between two variables. Line graphs can be used to identify trends over time, with time going along the x-axis. Common variables on the y-axis could be growth, population, or temperature. You can also compare the trends over time of two or more variables. For example, growth of plant 1 compared to growth of plant 2. Use different colours and symbols, and don't forget to add a legend. Bar graphs are used to present categorical data. Categorical variables represent types of data which may be divided into groups. For example, blood type, eye colour, educational level or age category. On a bar graph, the categories are shown along the x-axis. For example, the different sites where data was collected. The y-axis is usually a count. In this example, it would be the number of seeds collected. The red and blue bars are explained in the legend, as there are two different plants at each site. Pie charts and histograms can be used to show the distribution of one variable. Pie charts are circular graphics that are divided into segments and are used to illustrate proportions. The size of each segment represents the proportion compared to the whole. Pie charts are good for showing relative sizes. An example would be showing the nationalities of your study sample or perhaps the proportions of animal species. Pie charts are rarely used in science as they have lower accuracy compared to other types of graphs. When the slices become too small, pie charts have to rely on colours or arrows so the reader can understand them. This can make them unsuitable for use with large amounts of data. Histograms can also be used to show the distribution of a variable. You'll notice that histograms look very similar to bar graphs. However, histograms have no gaps between the boxes. Histograms are most commonly used for continuous variables. Continuous variables can take on any value between the minimum and maximum value. Examples include height, weight, or blood pressure. In this example, we are plotting the distribution of heights. The minimum value is 150 centimeters. The maximum value is 200 centimeters. Someone's height could be any value between 150 and 200 centimeters. Histograms group the continuous data into ranges. For example, height can be divided into 10 cm ranges. Any study participant with a height between 150 and 160 cm would be grouped into this range. Box and whisker plots can be used to show the distribution of two or more variables. A box and whisker plot is used to show the shape of the distribution, its central value, and its variability. It shows a five number summary the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum. The box shows the interquartile range between the first quartile and the third quartile, with the bars representing the range of data. 
Sometimes you can include outlier points as dots. Box and whisker plots are ideal for comparing distributions. In this example, we are comparing the distribution of birth weights of male and female babies. Some final tips for choosing the right graph. Your data may work with multiple types of graphs. It is important to choose the most clear and accurate graph. Some things you should consider. The types of variables. For example, are they categorical, quantitative or continuous variables? What message do you want your reader to understand about your data? Are you showing a distribution, a trend or a comparison? Finally, think about where you will be using this graph. Is it in a written report, a presentation or a poster? Make sure it will be easy to read and understand. This video was brought to you by Study Smarter UWA. For more videos, subscribe to our channel or visit studysmarter.uwa.edu.au.